गुड इवनिंग एंड वेलकम टू घना शॉट घना शॉट में आप सबका स्वागत है जय हिंद रामणाम एंड वाणकम आज हम बात करते हैं तालिबान और दुनिया के बारे में तालिबान एंड द वर्ल्ड एंड टू टॉक अबाउट तालिबान एंड द वर्ल्ड इज विद मी इज अनंत मिश्रा राइट अनंत हैज ऑलरेडी स्पोकन टू अस अर्लियर अबाउट तालिबान टीटीपी एंड पाकिस्तान ही इज नॉट न्यू टू अस but what's new about him today is uh, he is shortly going to sri lanka to talk about taliban and other issues in sri lanka and what we are going to do down the line is anant and i are going to have a talk when he is in sri lanka and he'll t- talk to us about the his impressions of sri lanka in the first week of february we'll look forward to that but that is later we all know taliban came into power about 2 years and Four months, five months back, two and a half years, they've stabilized. They're going nowhere. They're going to be in situation. Uh, their equations with Pakistan has changed, right? Everyone thought, you know, their equation with China is going to be a runaway train. Two years, something has happened. Or uh, their equations with India have changed, right? And their Lay, off late their equations with the central asian republics with whom they have borders and iran are changing and if i may say as far as afghanistan is concerned they're changing positively and uh, they seem to have some kind of a you know hand in this israel hamas war also but no one knows about it and that's why i called anand Anand is one of the few guys who actually knows what's happening in Taliban or in Afghanistan, right? Uh, from, and many people want uh, Anand to brief them about it, so that's why I said, uh, let's call Anand over to uh, Ghana Shot. And Anand has a terrific catchline, if I may say. His catchline is, "You call, I haul." So whenever I call, he hauls. Anand. <laughs> start calling <laughs> i as sir, sir thank you so much for having me here sir it's a, it's always a pleasure uh, to to come up and sir to brief your audience as to what is happening in 2024 uh sir in 2023 if i may run back to uh, the situation was a bit difficult because it was two years um we saw taliban maintaining some sense of stability so sir i would not run down to 2023 but i would rather say that uh in 2024 and in the end of 2023 we saw the taliban had few fans if i may call it sir in the capitals of central asia uh increasingly open to diplomatic engagement with still unrecognized rulers of afghanistan sir now uh, starting with the engagement from central asian countries it is very interesting because um all uh, whether we talk about middle east we talk about iran pakistan or china the engagement with central asia is different sir so that's how i intend to begin uh what catches central asia is not only the territorial proximity but also geographic proximity trade security and humanitarian key concerns now sir in 2022 and 2023 we saw we saw tajikistan which uh, was one of one the only one resistant central asian country to engage with the taliban started to show small steps towards diplomatic relations now ethnic tajiks comprises of let's say a quarter of afghanistan's population and taliban are historically rooted in pashtun community which makes up almost 40% of the country people now uh, emily rehman who's the uh, rehman who's the tajikistan's president he stated that the ethnic tajiks who essentially makes up to 46% of afghanistan has a more worthy role to play in uh, ethnically inclusive government um you know, for if if the if uh, the, the west or the international community may force or may pressurize taliban to form uh, in terms of its relation with tajikistan now this is the same pre- uh, president who also offered sanctuary to ahmed masood uh 2006 ruling by the tajikistan supreme court designated taliban as a terrorist organization which is still in place now why does tajikistan makes the more important note here is 
Now, even as diplomats from Afghanistan's previous government continue to operate out of the embassy in Dushanbe, the Taliban has been permitted to take over the consulate in Khoroksar. So, uh, within the borders of the country. So, now you've got two different entities. One is taking orders from Kabul. One is in, I would say, uh, in Dushanbe, is still independent. So, it's the only entity, it's the only country in the in the world which has... Uh, with the where the Afghan embassy is divided. Now, sir, the three central nations, uh, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, and Tajikistan, they form a key portion of trade, uh, trade routes between China, South Asia, Central Asia, what is modern Iran, Russia in the ancient times. Now, culminating, the Central Asian economy is 41 million people which makes Afghanistan the key access or the key player in Central Asia. In comparison to Kyrgyzstan and Turkmenistan, which is almost a sixth of its population, Tajikistan is less than a quarter, Kazakhstan is less than a half, and Uzbekistan, with the most, I would say the most populous country in Central Asia, around 35 million people. Now, sir, before Taliban came to power, 80% of the Afghan government's budget came from international donors, out of which 9.5 billion US dollars were key assets in Afghan Central Bank. Taliban banned Afghan women. Uh, we all know how it went, jeopardizing the operations of humanitarian uh, actors in the country. But um, there were certain key responsible heads. Uh, of the CSTO, the Collective Security Treaty Organization, which estimated that Islamic Khorasan almost have 6,500 to 8,000 fighters in the region, which was a key problem in case it pans out and uh, floods Central Asian uh, countries with uh, terrorist um, activities and instabilizers. That said, most of these countries are in 2024, are in a very... Uh, I would say, in a balancing need. Now, they don't have a any other alternative to engage with Taliban. They are wary of angering Western countries and they are still trying to work to isolate, to, to I would say, uh, integrate the Taliban economically, both diplomatically and uh, through trade. Now, through this, Uzbekistan has taken an active role where it's working in terms of distributing humanitarian aid. Um, you've got a South Uzbek city of Tarmez, uh, which uh, which uh, Afghanistan heavily relies on for trade, road, roll and rate, uh, I would say railroad linking uh, mechanism between Termes to the to the northern city of Mazar-e Sharif via the Haritan Road, where, where the Haritan Railways, where half of its imports, including aid, passes through. Now the railroad was built by Uzbekistan Railways in 2011, and so Diana, uh, Trans suspended operations in uh, February 2021 um, after there was a renewal. Uh, there was a dis there was a disagreement on the renewal based contract. So now the Uzbek president was of the opinion that since Taliban is a reality that we may all accept, we must now you know we must now engage. So Uzbekistan sent officials to Afghanistan and hold talks on the uh, Kosha Tepa Canal. Um, now, Tashkent insists that, it, again, Tashkent insists it does not recognize the Taliban until the international community moves to do so, but it still cannot wait uh, to engage or it aims to engage even if um, the engagement level does not escalate to the level of international community or the actors. Now, um, in, in, the, in the words of, uh, I would say, Uzbekistan top hierarchy, uh, uh, this is a verbatim quote, sir. We see a common future with immense common interests, no matter who is in power there. Now, this makes Tajikistan, Uzbekistan's relationship very interesting. Now, sir, at the recent piece that I wrote was on Kazakhstan. And Kazakhstan was also the country which was one of the kind to lift Taliban's name from, the, from its terrorist list, making it one of its kind, a very unique step. But the idea was, I argue, not only based on trade partnership and engagement, but also its, um, uh, I would say, ambitions, regional ambitions to expand. Why this happened in 2024 is a reason that it intend to increase trade partnership with Afghanistan by greater investi uh, diversifying economic investment opportunities, 
in the context of its highly ambitious transport corridor, which is also known as the Trans Caspian International Transport Route, which it has been promoting for years now, sir. Now, with Taliban on board, Astana would elevate to become one of the sole facilitator of trade, controlling the flow of goods between Asia and Europe. So, by seeking Taliban's support, Astana aims to monitor the flow of also Islamist factions. It is in a very unique position. It can act as a facilitator uh, to, I would say, monitor the spread of radical factions outside Afghanistan. A unique position to provide law enforcement capabilities to Taliban-led security establishment. With its greater engagement, it is also in a, in a very strategic position. A position to divert any attack conducted by Daesh or Al Qaeda on regional economies, and it also is in a, is in one of the I would say a perfect um, uh, entity, if I may call it, to uh, open doors to the regional economies by developing a dedicated security apparatus for Central Asia, relieving stress on uh, not only its uh, fragile economy which is currently experiencing strain due to sanctions imposed by the West on its largest trading partner, Russia. Now, sir, this is something that we would see in the context of Central Asia. And this engagement in Central Asia, because you own, you not only have a Trans-Caspian International uh, Transport Route, but also involves Tajikistan, uh, also involves Uzbekistan, it has a direct implications on Iran. So, sir, Iran uh, experienced uh, a, an attack on um, the, the Khomeini's, I would say, place of residence, place of birth by the ISKP, which it immediately hailed as not done by ISKP, but by the Americans, the West and Israel. But, sir, it may camouflage statements in the statements in the context of, I would say, um, uh, leading the argument towards the current uh, war in 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 the Middle East. Um, but the but the truth here is uh, the deepening relationship between Iran and Taliban. Iran knows that ISKP is a menace in Afghanistan, and this is the reason why. Uh, let me be very categorical in saying this, sir, that Iran, uh, uh, Tehran and Taliban are not friends. They've been strategically aligned on certain issues. Their strategic interest is motivated by ideology. There is no other way to say this. And they're concerned about the Sunni majority um, and their economic expansion because it wants Afghanistan to be a hub of their product in Central Asia. So even besides security concerns, it is concerned about its economy. Now, by that logic, uh, Iran and Taliban have a lot of role to play when it comes to countering the ISKP threat. Iran in particular is immensely, after this attack, there have been rounds and rounds of discussion between uh, Taliban leadership and Tehran on the potential spillover of violence entering into the, their territory. Now, this attack, which, which, which happened on the sacred grounds of Khomeini's land, can also be, is, is also be or can now be considered as ISKP entering into, into, into Iranian borders. Now, this Iran's engagement with Afghanistan is not only um, limited to ISKP threat, but it is hell-bent on eliminating Western interests in the region. Uh, so, non-traditional security threats, including climate change, is also driving Tehran to, to interact with or to engage with Taliban. Water resources have depleted in both Iran and Afghanistan. There is a vast amount of dry land. Hamun Lake is shrinking surrounding villages are emptying wildlife and vegetative vegetation um is is uh, literally disappearing and it's not just the severe water crisis that is being experienced in tehran or in sistan baluchistan um it's it's experiencing in both the in both the countries so they've they've got certain engage, engagement in this accord to talk about 
Now, recent border class clashes sir, is also um, points towards an ineffective border management or governance on both the sides. Now, Iranian and the Taliban government has basically no effective regulations in terms of water management or general environmental protection policy. Now, uh, I've read the documents what uh, the current regime, uh, the current Taliban regime intends to follow. But, sir, they don't have any clue as to what water management policy is. And uh, to one of those individuals who are key policymakers within the Taliban, I interviewed him and I wanted to get a knowledge as to what environmental protection policy makes sense to them. And he simply says, uh, in so which I may, with, with your permission, translate in Hindi, is Jo Allah ne hame diya hai, hum usi pe guzara karenge. So, so what, this so is, what you're saying? So what you're saying is the, uh, the 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 three Central Asian republics, right? Kazakhstan, right? Uh, Uzbekistan, and uh, the third one is Kyrgyzstan, isn't it? Next yes, to sir, each other. Yes, sir. Uh, these three are now warming up to Taliban. Warming fundamentally so far so they are right they because they are not south corridor or would call it trans caucus corridor trans caspian quarter whatever you want because they are energy rich they need a way out and they also see that the this 42 million afghans uh, are an economic bank for them okay and now uh, iran has also jumped into the fray iran has also jumped in sir because they don't have any other option except live with Taliban. And if they don't live with Taliban, they're going to have problems Sir. in eastern Iran and northern Iran, if I may say. Sir, they do. Isn't it? They do. Especially yes, Pakistan, do. Pakistan, even northern Iran, uh, they'll have problems. Absolutely, sir. So they have to they come. Do. Of course, Iran and uh, Afghanistan have a fundamental contradiction of Siyar Shunni. Absolutely, sir. They do. So there is one kind of a picture emerging there that Iran and the Central Asian republics want to make good with Taliban. They don't have a choice, sir, to be very honest. Yeah. So that means it's a change of scene. What earlier, when Taliban came, they, those people were totally cutter with them. Okay, I don't want. Now this Taliban is a reality. They are adjusting to the reality. Absolutely, sir. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> so, sir, in terms of uh, in terms of the situation, uh, we saw uh, border skirmishes happening uh, between uh, both the sides, and um, there have been, I would say, uh, climate change is something that is going to affect a lot. And and so, let me tell you, um, being a hard power guy, uh, I, I firsthand saw the implications of climate change. Uh, we have so there have been clashes within the community. So the ethnic Tajiks and the ethnic Uzbeks went against ramming each other up in in, in terms of a small skirmish uh, within Afghanistan because of exchange of water. So who wanted to control water as a services or access to water was a problem. And then I saw both the clash, both the uh, ethnic um, I would say communities clashing against with each other. And then uh, Taliban does not come and interfere now. Here, sir, the thing is, Taliban is now a state entity. So any natural resource that comes in, it's the state, uh, I would say, uh, uh, from the democratic principles of how governance works, it's the state's entity or the state is responsible for providing resources. They've left these two, I would say, in this case, two entities to uh, sort each other out and, and then decide who's going to control who. So this is something that that literally um, I would say uh, talk about their inability to govern. And uh, no, no, no. Uh, what you're saying is that you know Taliban <laughs> is not inability to govern. What you're actually telling me is sir. that Taliban has left the levers of power to go where it wants. It's making its own wing, <laughs> making power own, sir. Right? Absolutely. on its own. <laughs> Absolutely. It's yeah. some kind of a loose federalism where they're saying, hey, bhai, jo tumne karna kar lo, jo hum karenge, wo hum karenge. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, so in, in, in actual words, you're saying is general chaos will rule Afghanistan. General chaos will, sir. There's no other way to say it, sir. You have put it, you have put it very well, sir. There's no other way to say it. And not only this, because, sir, if I may, sir, uh, the rule for international water sharing mechanism, like the 1973 treaty, 
the Iranians and um, uh, the Taliban have been gone back and forth over it. And this treaty, this masla needs one-to-one -one engagement, but neither Taliban nor, nor, nor Tehran wants to sit and read each other until and unless this problem sorts out. So, sir, the aspect of, I would say, a regional multi multilateral effort or a unilater unilateral effort What's is not going to work. Sir. Nothing will work. Nothing will work. Nothing will work. So, sir, but sir. even though nothing works, sir. all the countries want to still deal with Taliban because there's no other way out. There's no other way out, sir. There's no other way out, sir. First class. And most importantly, most importantly, sir, this is where it is getting very interesting now, sir. Because after uh, we saw uh, Pakistan, uh, ho I would say, holding, I mean, in a very uh, inhumane um, a decision, which which is, uh, which which I would say, which literally shook the nerves of of Taliban uh, leadership in Rehbari Shura. And sir, uh, let me tell you, the decision taken by Pakistani to, to send off the refugees back to where they came from, literally sent I would say shivers to the spines of, of, of Taliban leadership. And there have been uh, hours and hours of uh, discussions at the Rehbari Shura, the top leadership council, as to what they intend to do. And uh, this not only comes as a, I would say, uh, as a surprise, because we all thought that Taliban eventually started with Pakistan's assistance, ISI comes into play. So there will be some sense of a, I would say, sympathetic cause to Pakistan, or at least to, to the decision that they, that, they, that they took in this. But so nothing of that sort happens at this, uh, happened at this point of time. So when Taliban leadership, uh, and, and after this, Taliban leadership and Islamabad met for like a, a, I would say a, more than a dozen number of times. And whenever Pakistan as a policy meets Taliban, they only have one agenda in their mind, TTP. So at this point of time, when they rose this agenda in a meeting with the Taliban leadership, including Mutaki, the, the, the key leadership said very categorically, and they said, and quote, sir, that um, uh, the Taliban leadership, uh, so the Taliban leadership not only deflected the Pakistani concerns, but also uh, the key leadership, uh, con uh, uh, I would say, uh, uh, coined uh, the issue that Pakistan is facing against Taliban, uh, as against TTP, as an internal problem. So we have got nothing to do with it. So TTP is your business. We don't have nothing to do with it. So they've, they've said it. They, they, they said it. And they also, so uh, then they circled back to the decision of, of Pakistan, um, I would say, uh, uh, expelling Afghan refugees. And uh, they reached out to the people of Pakistan directly. And then they said, look, what is happening? They are your people. They are Pashtuns. Look what, are, what they're doing it to you. So in a matter of weeks, there was an uprising within the Pashtun community in the north, the NWFP and Fata provinces. And this changed. This changed the entire narrative of how Habatullah Akhundizada at some point of time had a liberal stand towards Pakistan. So this guy comes up, comes out and he says, Pakistani government, including military generals, should adhere to Islamic principles. So <laughs> now it's very, <laughs> it's very interesting, sir. <laughs> and Prime Minister Hassan Akhund says this, and if you you I, I saw the uh, I saw the transcript of it in in Pashto, sir. It's more like Akhund Zada is sitting. It's like you know Akhund Zada is a little guy who's who's um, um, mumming up in the ears of uh, of uh, Prime Minister Hassan Akhund, and he's saying it's un-Islamic. I mean, it's what they are doing is essentially un-Islamic. And uh, this was this was followed by um, uh, Mohammad Yaqub, the defense minister, saying that there will be severe consequences of this decision that Pakistan will reap for decades to come. Now, this is the strong, very strong statement. So, so in terms of in terms of this, um, I reached out, I identified what Haqqani has to say because uh, Haqqanis have been prompting, promoting, have been even playing both the sides for a very long time, sir. So uh, Haqqani, because now he, um, uh, uh, Siraj Haqqani takes a, a podium in the political leadership, so he has to toe the line. And then he also condemned um, uh, Pakistan, his long-standing ally. And he says that, you know, this is uh, reiterating it as un-Islamic. So it's, it's uh, uh, Taliban leaders, after this decision, uh, those who were sympathetic towards Pakistan, 
they were trying to build a narrative uh, because they they were witnessing certain hostility which pakistan has created in terms of this decision within the shura and even the pragmatic leaders which were of the opinion no we must take pakistan as an ally and you know they've been supporting us they became furious and uh, but again the fear currently that in their minds uh, or even then it, it existed as pakistan has had a very significant contribution in the downfall of multiple afghan governments over the past of four decades now taking this into account there has to be a reasonable negotiation or a discussion that pakistan has to be or, or the taliban needs to play with so this is what the uh, i would say uh, uh, not very hardliner or liberal guys has to say uh, for them so um, now with the hostilities that is going to persist uh, 2024 is not looking great for pakistan sir and uh, i have uh, i have i have argued in this stance in two parts sir one is identifying pakistani's options and one is identifying what taliban will do sir with your permission sir um, i would like to bring the pakistan option first because yeah, yeah. 2024 is something that it's not looking out for them sir so sir uh, if let's say hypothetically the engagement between taliban and pakistan uh, is is driven to a to a point of no return so there uh, pakistan may put a series of i would say sustained economic pressure um uh, on on taliban and they would try to circle them back and uh, to review their support to ttp it's always going to be ttp for them first sir now pakistan's economic leverage is basically the afghanistan's main artery of yeah uh, which it does not have ratified yet but sir so the trade agreement has not been ratified yet sir so this is something and afghanistan's main export market is pakistan so accounting over 50% of exports sir now border crossing between pakistan and afghanistan is 40% of afghanistan's customs revenues and this is going to be uh, in 2024 is going to be nearly as 60% of taliban's own treasure so out of this export taliban's make 60% out of their own for their own uh, uh, pick pocketing if i may use this term very correctly sir now uh, sir what happens is pakistan is may with this if this engagement happens it's going to tighten up its rules in terms of transit imposed uh, uh, bank guarantees requirements for afghan traders for um, also uh make an expanded list of goods that cannot be used as a trading mechanism on its borders um 10% duty increase kar denge sir at borders 20% elevate kar denge uh yeah, so into, they'll so, make everything costly for afghanistan they'll, they'll make everything costly about them sir and uh, the now it is interesting sir because pakistan's economy is also relying on afghan coal so sir there is a possibility that and this has happened international coal prices dropped Pakistan dropped the number of trucks of Ghan coal uh, was used to bring in sir so this is going to be this is going to be another tussle for them so it's going to be an economic battle for them sir and if economic let's say if economic pressure fails sir and an escalatory step comes into play pakistan's military is going to do a cross border military action against its leaders and camps not only against taliban but against ttp in per se sir so taliban ko to sir they won't touch but they will retaliate against ttp in a much more harsh manner and this is going to i would say create more anger in terms of uh, this is going to escalate in terms of uh, uh, in terms of taliban uh, military wing as well and um, uh, so uh, pakistani military action and then uh, may result in increased support to iskp in so sir with this happening i am predicting it is it is again my argument sir that laskari jangwi uh, jaish e mohammed let sir the flow of fighters to india is going to decrease and those individuals entering into kashmir are not going to be regular militia they are going to be to fill up the ranks of the pakistani military are going to use their regular troops so they are going to use their irregulars against the fight in ttp they are not going to go for their men to 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 shaheed in the category in the i would say in the skirmish against ttp sir so this is something and this is going to go as long as uh, either an, an agreement to ceasefire has been brought down or ttp capitulates now sir in addition to this uh, sir 
Pakistani political and military leaders uh, in terms of uh, in terms of uh, I would say a firefight against the TTP, uh, they may try to create I would say a sense of uh, unity among the military as well as the political community, sir. And um, uh, through to engage that, they are going to grow. They are going to build up the non-Pashtun tribal leaders, who essentially are a key part of you know, sir, Taliban TTPs or Taliban's opposition. So this is how they are going to play, sir. And uh, the deteriorating ties between Taliban and Pakistan, uh, sir, they are trying to. They are going to try to improve it. Uh, and use uh, use retaliatory measures against the TTP at the same time. So they may, let's say, get 10 trucks or 20 trucks of coal, but then they carry an airstrike against the TTP. So this is how, sir, it 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 intends to balance its relationship, sir. Now, this yeah, is what yeah. I... Oh, sir. All, all, uh, all through, it's going to be a carrot and stick policy. It's, it's going to be both, a carrot and stick. And both ways. This will be both ways. Uh, sir, it's interesting for Taliban, sir. I, I I was about to about to come to that, sir. Now, sir, uh, Taliban does not uh, have the economic leverage that Pakistan has, sir. Now, but Pakistani political space is an accessibility for Taliban, sir. And Taliban through through this engagement, if this firefight continues, sir, Taliban is going to go one place. It has been welcomed, sir. Then that's why I started with it. Central Asia and Iran to weather the economic pain uh, and sustained Pakistani coercion. So, sir, as I as I talked about earlier, sir, the Taliban has already reached out to Iran. Uh, 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 Abdul Ghani brother went to Iran. He made a very short trip. He'll take accessible. He'll take access to port. He'll try and make more trade concessions with Iran. He is going to uh, cushion the amount of losses on trade uh, if Pakistan does hurt them. Um, if the trade is restricted uh, in Pakistan, it is going to open much more channels into Iran and try to, I would say, bring in some sort of a replacement. Now, sir, uh, again, it's uh, Taliban and uh, Pakistan has a very deep relationship. So Taliban may also seek Iran's assistance in doing a back channel with Pakistan, sir. And in the midst of this, um, Taliban has access to sympathetic Pakistani military officials. So this is where they may come up to play. And there are a handful of international actors who've been trying to engage with Taliban more actively. Uh, they will come in, uh, probably they will try and get UNHCR, UNAMA, such institutions that already exist in Afghanistan to try and, I would say, um, de-escalate the conflict. Now, sir, the country so is what, all... Sir. Yeah, so what you're saying is... Actually, the situation as far as you know, Taliban Afghanistan is concerned is flipped. Sir. Completely flipped. Those countries which are not with Taliban are today with Taliban virtually. And yes, those countries which, like Pakistan, Pakistan which was with uh, Taliban is now sir, sir. almost a drag us drawn with them. And a yes, lot of sir. statement going on. Each one is yes, weighing up his options, isn't it? Yes, and sir. this is going to continue throughout 2024. There's this is going to continue about. throughout 2024, sir. And in this, so, so this is a only, yes, recently this chap Mullah Fazlul Rahman of sir. Pakistan. He went and met this Akut Zada, and sir. I don't think nothing has come out of it. So nothing is going to come out. Uh, so and then yeah. he came back, and still Pakistanis are crying. Ki, bhai, kya hoga <laughs> yeah. But sir, uh, Taliban still Taliban still has one more card to play, sir, and currently consumed in the israel hamas war sir the the qatar has a role to play yeah and let's talk qatar, about qatar. Is, <laughs> qatar has a role to play sir so um qatar is going to be the i would say the uh, 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 the foundation of a relationship if it's really if, if taliban's relationship in pakistan uh, with pakistan goes hellwire so this is going to this is it is going to involve qatar to negotiate an engagement between Pakistan yeah, because uh, Qatar, see that makes sense because Qatar sir. has helped Taliban negotiate with US forces. Sir, sir. At yes, that sir. time, say five, six years back, the Doha sir. negotiation started through Qatar. Sir, sir. Where initially Americans and uh, Taliban were talking. The same this Mullah Brother and uh, Akunzada, not Akunzada, and uh, that guy Khalilzad. Khalilzad, sir. Uh, 
so they were talking uh, in qatar and sure. it was only at the later stage that pakistan was involved in the qatar negotiation doha deals doha sure. uh, talks sure, sure. So sure. the same thing is going to repeat. Only thing is this time the go between is uh, Doha will be the go between between Taliban and Pakistan. So now it is interesting, sir, because with the Chinese ambassador already in Kabul and uh, uh, is already engaging very actively. So, sir, there are two pivots to it, sir. One is it may reach out to China. It may definitely reach out to Beijing because again, China, Pakistan, Afghanistan. It's a it's a matrix. that uh, these relationship you know china is building a relationship on both or sir taliban can taliban will also definitely look for pakistan's paranoia greater engagement with us sir and this is not only limited to providing a what we have been asking for a very long time um, a terror list or the number of actors who have been plotting against us from their state but also means of a greater access to diplomatic and economic assistance programs humanitarian aid services um, trying to escalate the i would i would i term this sir, this is my coined term escalate to uh, leading to de escalation sir so this is how they will essentially reach out to us and um, but sir taliban is going to increase violence it doesn't mean that it is not going to it will turn out to its militant factions affiliated groups tehreek e jihad pakistan you name it al qaeda is going to get popped up in the indian subcontinent hafiz gul bahadur we, we talked about lashkar e islam again is going to come up so th- th- then taliban will independently uh, support baluch separatists coming in and then uh, it's it's going to it's going to leave it to their own own fate uh, which probably will def- will will hurt the chinese interests in the region so sir mota mota sir this is how the equation is going to pan out in terms of um, economic engagement and security apparatus in terms of both taliban and pakistan uh, with this decision that the pakistan has taken essentially it's a it, it is shot it uh, on his own foot sir and there will be grave repercussions to the region okay so now let's talk of china <laughs> so china oh, so, <laughs> it's very interesting sir china is i mean um, so china is literally looking out for 2024 and Look, um, what, what i sir, read what what i read sir, in sir. in a chinese portal okay i'm sir, giving sir. you the chinese view the chinese sir. want to buy afghanistan sir the taliban they sir. want to buy peace in xinjiang or xinjiang sir. by buying out uh, uh, taliban Sir. how far do you think this is true oh definitely sir they've got a plan for it and they've got a plan for everything sir in terms of from natural mineral resources to dams i'll tell you sir so if, correct me if i'm wrong sir afghanistan shares a 90 km border with china sir which starts yeah. from the wakhan corridor and in the northeast and sir is not only an important player in the bri i mean there's no that goes without saying the only concept the whole concept of bri sir is relying on untapped resource reserves of rare earth uh, uh, which which it has which is very dying to access to it now sir uh, this is i spoke to chinese scholars on terms of afghanistan sir and they repeat this term very categorically they 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 uh, argue that afghanistan's peace and stability is of great interest to beijing now uh, how does it, china comes into play by making afghanistan peace and stable when uh, it started engaging with taliban even before uh, i would say uh, the taliban came up to power and took over kabul so the engagement this is this is how this is it's very interesting now in 2022 sir the uh, shanghai corporation organization may xi jinping xi jinping stressed that you know we should join hands and we should <laughs> safeguard the peace and stability in afghanistan and it invited uh, member states to join sco afghanistan contact group to basically smoothen the transition uh, in the region and they've already we uh, yang yi has already said that we are not going to interfere in, in internal efforts of afghanistan but yet in every rahbari shura he's got a seat there sir he's got a rep who goes and sits in rahbari shura so sir uh, intra afghan negotiation is something that they clearly want to avoid or they clearly want to distance themselves but sir one rep sits of him in the rahbari shura sir 
so it's very a pragmatic approach that the chinese have taken sir and um, so the uh, in terms of i would say uh, the engagement the truest engagement or the true idea of china afghan relationship starts from the fourth trilateral dialogue sir which was held in june 2021 and uh, it reiterated beijing reiterated the willingness to expand regional stability by deepening the cooperation of bri in afghanistan sir and uh, sir yes sir that so they talked good. about sir yes, sir sir so they deal, you know Uh, they're, they're part of the deal, absolutely. But the the idea is that, sir, uh, uh, they've been they've been focused on BRI so much that uh, they are now trying to engage greater projects, looking that BRI is going to be a failed attempt. They're not saying that BRI is a failed attempt in Afghanistan. They're simply saying that BRI is not good, and it it does, they're not saying it, sir. It appears in this way. So let me talk about the trade flow between China and Afghanistan with your permission, sir. Now, in 2020, yeah, yeah, sir, China grew to become the second largest export destination for Afghan goods, and uh, so uh, China's share uh, in 2019 to 2020 in the bilateral trade statistics, sir, and I'm quoting the Central Bureau of Statistics of Afghanistan, sir, in the data of 2019 and 2020, sir, it was it grew to 17 percent, and over the last five years, so till 2024, at uh, 2023, sir, I don't have the data for 2024. Uh, sir the exports grew immensely and uh, from 2016 to 2023 sir it reached to more than 175% and um, sir if if i quote the top 5 commodities that afghanistan exports to china are edible fruits melon citrus fruits uh, wool animal hair uh, yarn and fabric pearls and precious stones metals cotton carpets and other textiles to name a few sir and the five commodities that china has been exporting which and there is a huge increment in value 80.85.13 million us in terms of electronic exports rubbers machinery equipment very heavy equipment sir so this is where it comes in very heavy earth moving equipment vehicles other than railways tramway machinery nuclear reactors and boilers so these have been started coming in into afghanistan sir and um so so this talks about as to what china intends to do in 2024 now china is eyeing to two sir in terms of multilateral engagement first is sir the free trade agreement so there is a possibility china may sign an fta with taliban because they already have an ambassador here they've got an engagement they've not ratified they will never ratify but then they'll do a free trade agreement with them or sir if the legal if the legality is involved international recognition then they may dial it down a bit to double taxation avoidance agreement sir which is going to ease a bit of flow now sir there is something known as china afghanistan joint committee on economics and trade so they are going to expand this and they are going to have exchange notes granting zero traffic treatment which means that you can have some exports uh, of afghan goods to china without exchanging with the, the yen sir and 97% of of uh, or 98% of the goods coming into uh, from afghanistan uh, may enjoy zero tariffs this is something that it is very keen on uh, i would say uh, further expanding and adding more number of goods into this so china has already renewed this commitment on 1st of december 2022 sir but the list was with the commodities were no, fewer like, numbers you, what yeah. what you are saying is that china is trying to give a lot of chocolates to afghanistan a lot of chocolates a lot of chocolates sir. and uh, okay. then then sir it's going to be coming to belt and road initiative sir now um, sir uh, this is here is a catch sir uh, afghanistan want afghanistan desperately wants a bri but in the point is they don't have natural they don't have uh, i would say uh, earth moving materials and the technical expertise even if they do they don't have the necessary technical expertise to to basically deep down or drill into the to the to the to this uh, under surface and sub surface to actually get access to that sir so their bri project is more like came to a halt sir and i wouldn't uh, i wouldn't uh, technically using the word halt but it's not giving the expected outcome as what china thought and it is getting much more success in bolivia sir as compared to uh, in 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 south america yeah, and other nations as compared yeah, to you know here there is security issue so security taliban issue is not 
see taliban can't guarantee security of all this uh, earth moving equipment to china na even if china wants to operate it tomorrow absolutely but sir but what they done is they're not uh, i would say they're not uh, giving up on the plan sir because this no, is no, what Look, yes sir well, sir the way i look at it there are uh, two sir. factors to this sir. one is china has greed sir sir it wants sir. rare earth material and uh, all the minerals mineral wealth of afghanistan sir sir okay that is right, their sir. greed but sir. on the other hand unless they keep afghanistan occupied sir. all that overflow will go into xinjiang all these flows <laughs> yes, will get back in xinjiang So it yes, has to sir. keep Afghanistan in humor. Now, sir, to counter the Xinjiang effect, sir, they have played a card, sir. They have now introduced Silk Road, Silk Road Trade Engagement Program. By they are bringing in scholars, uh, and they are trying to revive that Silk, uh, how Silk Road essentially started connected, connecting it to the local community. The importance of Afghan Chinese historical ties coming in, sir. And oh, what sir, they've done. Sir, but, but it's, no, it's, I, it's not working, sir. Actually, if I may, I may. So I'm, I'm, I'm not a. Okay. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, sir. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at very, very objectively. No, no, no. Is, I, I go with, I'll go with you. It will work. See, the point is the people in Afghanistan will are like a sponge today. Anyone sir, gives them anything, they'll absorb it. Sir, but sir, that's. I mean, sir, grudgingly. uh that shouldn't have happened sir but uh, uh, sir the uh, afghans have a very short memory sir i mean uh, they are seeing as to who's coming into assistance and what they've done is sir uh, they're trying to expand the afghan corridor itself sir and there is a afghan valley that essentially divides between china and tajikistan afghan corridor a 98 km uh, wide strip of land so they've now come in with the help of tajiks now this is where it gets interesting tajiks have started coming in sir now through with the help of tajikistan sir they want um, yeah, to all, all china has already got a base in tajikistan just they got got a base in tajikistan sir but again tajikistan is the only land no sir ahmed masood is still there so hmm. tajikist for tajiks it's a very complex game now tajiks may uh, tajiks are not handing over ahmed masood to him they tajikistan is the only country which has both a taliban consulate and a purani tanzim republic consulate so it's and it's now assisting tajikistan to sort of develop the the wakhan corridor project because the chinese are thinking ki hamara paisa to gaya brr ne to hamara paisa gaya afghanistan ke andar there is no return to it now what do we do should we invest unilaterally because if we start investing unilaterally it's better to fund somewhere else because afghanistan to a vacuum ban jayega hum unilaterally kitna bhi pump kare return to kuch nahi hai so sir they have started yeah. taking assistance from tajikistan and uh, tajikistan is now started providing logistical services uh, tra- tra- transportation through through trucks and services and this is where you you have chinese construction firms um assisted by tajik tajik firms coming in now to make the i would say to counter the loss uh, of bri sir uh, china had initially uh, which came all over the news that afghanistan is going to be a part of the cpac and uh, the idea is to construct uh, uh, i would say construct an uh, upgrade low uh, low investment project so this is where it gets interesting sir the the chinese are now funding low investment projects which has a i would say a potency to become a greater strategic asset in some time um, on the line yeah, yeah. so okay now let, let, let me see you have spoken sir. about china and uh, you know afghanistan sir so sir quite some time now sir but see the original idea was that pakistan will make inroads into afghanistan and china will ride piggy back on that sir. so you know actually not spoken of pakistan and china are getting into afghanistan it is to tajikistan they are opening a new route altogether <laughs> Yes, sir. Because Pakistan is not in a position to get into Afghanistan anymore. Sir. So that means this whole story, which they started with in 2021, so that story is gone. Something new is happening. Yes, sir. Yeah, this is all new, sir. And and whatever is happening is all uh, un- uncharted territory. We don't know where it is going. There is no rule book for it, sir. There is no playbook, sir. If if somebody comes in and says, "Ha, ki hami to pata tha aisa hoga," sir, he's lying, sir. we you, you, this is there is no rule book you we can't on the basis of a traditional analysis 
of of you know uh, pakistan and china being friends and entering into afghanistan joining hands together like you know holding hands and entering afghanistan that's not going to happen sir okay so fine so now with this we are very clear china is sir. desperately trying to enter afghanistan but it is sir. everything is nebulous out there right sir. pakistan has been shut out of the whole game because of this this thing uh, and pakistan and afghanistan have their own problems yes, and sir. tajikistan and those countries are trying to make good with taliban right sir. and even iran is trying to make good with taliban so this is the whole story of taliban has had has with the world so uh, sir, india as- uh, sir, uh, this is the whole story for uh, uh, sir um, the 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 the, the uh, I would say Taliban in Asia. Now, sir, it gets it gets interesting with with Qatar coming in as a neutral player, bringing uh, negotiations, and uh, the Qataris essentially, uh, uh, sir, starting up where they left, um, giving an independent identity to Taliban, and then leaving them in Kabul to rule. And govern. So, sir, um, in terms of this is what the the Qataris are essentially doing, sir. But in terms of India, uh, sir, um, I I am I'm very confident, sir, that the game of what we've been playing, waiting and watching, uh, is is going to give us an opportunity instead of we just like all Tajiks or all Central Asian economies are uh, trying to nab. And I think, sir, the waiting game is going to be profitable to us because okay. it is a high probability that uh, and and Taliban is watching this, sir. So Taliban are not folks with pajamas. So, so during my engagement with Taliban, sir, I used to consider them as folks wearing pajamas with an AK, which is com- which completely changed after they came up to power and then they realized that they're not some ragtag bunch of militias. They're actually entering into the game of governance. So this this mindset changed. They've got a think tank of their own based in Kabul, sir. So they <laughs> oh, that's, <this>. good. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. They have a think tank. Okay. <laughs> they have a think that's tank, a sir. Tank. And and somebody somebody spoke to me that you know you you do a lot of conferences, events on Taliban everywhere. Why don't you do it for us? And I'm like, yeah, until mm-hmm. unless I got internationally sanctioned by like you guys. So it's very interesting. They've got a think tank of their own and they talk. And they talk. What is India doing? What is Pakistan doing? How, how is this happening? It's like I would I wouldn't offend my American friend, but I would turn this as American version of USIP. So you got a whole funded Congress funded USIP, similarly to Akhundzada funded the Taliban think tank. And so they're watching this. They're watching what is India doing. The waiting game that we have been playing is going to give us very very effective results. And the engagement where I I stopped off, sir, where the Taliban may reach out to us, the Taliban is doing. It's a slow process. The Taliban has an engagement with us, and we have been engaging with the, with the Taliban very actively. But then this is going to go progressively. But sir, I uh, I am uh, uh, I would say I'm positive that this cautious stand of what New Delhi is seeking or is looking at or experiencing is going to deliver positive results because we are not in a rush to uh, to i would say um, validate uh, resources that the taliban has we are not here we are to 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 acquire a piece of land just like everyone else we are here for the people uh, we don't have to prove our engagement or relationship with afghans we have a historical connect with them we don't have to prove it sir the number of afghans i've met in delhi is much more than probably i could meet anywhere else in paris or in new york so this talks about the relationship that we share with them and uh, sir more importantly um we uh, we still have a lot to, a lot of room to i would say to maneuver we have not opened our engagement with afghanistan F- uh, freedom front the uh, equivalent of i would say the advanced version of uh, northern alliance we have still not have our engagement with ahmed masood now um to to create a some sort of I would say a back channeling or some sort of an a balance approach. It is important that New Delhi must, and this is me. That means you uh, have lost. Yeah, I mean, what you're given is you are dealing with Afghanistan. You are dealing with Taliban. At sir. the same time, you still have a role to play with the Northern Alliance. With the Northern the Alliance. Erstwhile Northern Alliance. Erstwhile Northern yes. Alliance and Amarsha yes, Masood. Sir. Okay, so we still have a lot of uh, cards up our sleeve. Yes, sir. I mean, that's, the, that's the sense I get out of your speech. 
Yes, sir. And that you're, right. you're absolutely right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We're absolutely right. And whereas, on the other hand, China is putting a lot of cards on the table. So it is. 2024, it's going to be very incre- very engaging. As, uh, yes, sir. So that means you, we have to be very clear as to how China is putting cards on the table and how we have to play this game. Because sir, yes, sir. In some manner, we have the initiative of uh, wait and watch. Yes, sir. And it's going to be productive for us, sir. The decision okay. has been right, sir. That's fine. So, okay, now that you covered all these, uh, you know, Afghanistan and the world around it, sir. what about USA? What is the role USA has here still? Uh, sir, the Americans have been... Uh... Uh, the Americans have been very cautiously uh, playing this game, sir. So uh, the Afghanistan Freedom Front uh, is based out in US. So they already have through Congress or by a Congress. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so they've they've already they already have uh, initiated ties. But the engagement by uh, American businessmen with Taliban is also is, is also increased is also interesting. So one hand they've and they were engaging with. Uh, the freedom forces um, of the erstwhile Afghan uh, army, uh, and then they have, uh, they have their business community went in and uh, spoke to the leadership in Taliban. So uh, after 21 years, I do not, I, I do not reckon that they're going to come back, sir. There's no, I mean, no, 20, I'm not saying they'll come back. Look, they, 21 years Americans is too much. will not come back. No, no, wait. Americans won't come back into Afghanistan. Sir. They still must be having their pockets of influence one way or the other to do things. Yes, sir. They, yes, sir. They do, sir. And uh, they, they will always have, sir. That is how they, they've been They've been smartest of the lot, sir. I mean, we've been, uh, there have been a lot of comments and there have been a lot of opinion pieces which have, which have criticized Washington on its step. But I think they're playing a very smarter game in this game, in this particular context, sir. And by not engaging with Taliban, but by sending a business delegation to interact with Taliban, I mean, that's just, that's, that's that's interesting. That's something that we, even we haven't done yeah. so far. So, so and fine. then, sir, they are also, they are also uh, flooding billions of dollars. Now, it is very interesting, sir. Uh, in Afghanistan, the amount of Afghanis have decreased. The amount of US dollars circulated in Afghan market has increased. So in India, if correct me if I'm wrong, sir, if one US dollar is roughly about 80 or, or 83 in and around, sir, it's 60, it's almost 60 in Afghanistan. And because of that, Afghanis have stabilized. So since Afghanis are lesser in circulation in Afghanistan than US dollars, the stability, the stability of, of, of the currency is because of America pumping amount of US dollars into Afghanistan. So this is uh, this is uh, this is a very I, I would uh, I wouldn't say a thought about process, but so this is very uh, productive and counterproductive for either Americans or for Afghan community. So this is one way that the Americans have been helping. Now the humanitarian effort is come will continue definitely yes, but as long as um, I do not foresee in the in the coming years a engagement i would say a formal engagement or even a discussion or some some sort uh, happening from from uh, political leadership uh, even yeah, after politically, who, i don't think yeah i i agree uh, with whoever, you Between, uh, usa sir, and taliban there will be no there no there will be no political engagement at all sir yeah. they've already done that yeah. in qatar they've they've done that in doha they've shut that down sir and it, it uh, so if you if you ask me what uh, american policy on afghanistan is going to be sir i think it is it it may not be a political decision to engage, but sir, with all economy, with all major economies coming in, the only left out economy is European Union. So European Union has not. They're still arguing whether they need to engage or not. But sir, I'm of the opinion that instead of whether arguing on engagement or not, or pros and cons towards this, it is important to open a dialogue, sir. And okay. if it's something that so, is going to be productive for them, sir. Productive, fine. So we've spent nearly one hour on this talk, and it was quite very interesting. I must say, sir, should we take some questions? Roger, sir. Okay. Okay. One, the first question: Whose game is playing out in the geopolitics of this region? Is it Uh, anyone who's uh, this thing, or everyone is there playing his game in this? No, sir. It's kind of Afghan (laughs) rule. It's it's very interesting, sir, because. All of the members who are playing this game are part of SEO, sir. Now, okay. everybody is a part of SEO, sir. 
but nobody is by nobody by that logic is playing a multilateral game sir nobody has ever said that we are going going to go through sco everybody is independently engaging with taliban and whatever independently so that's fine that's a nice question the next question akash asks is all this requires money where is all this money coming from which is the money trail i i i did tell you sir the us dollars have been pumped up into afghan for so many for so many months to come sir that their afghani local currency is stabilized where do you think the american money is coming from <laughs> oh, yeah okay fine uh, uh, next question is what is india's role in all this aside from pro- providing aid on call uh, that is something that me has to answer sir <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, take a call. What do you think India can do? Let me ask. Sir, humanitarian question. aid is something that we are very concerned, sir. And humanitarian aid, in terms of if Iran goes on uh, jolly jolly with uh, Taliban, sir, we risk losing Chabar because Iran okay. controls Chabar, sir. And our FM did, our EAM did uh, had a very lengthy discussion, sir. Um, so I, I, I really hope that Chabar plays a critical role for us, sir. but uh, if iran goes goes into detailed conversation with taliban and they have more uh, i would say they have more better engagement with taliban sir we may risk losing chabar right that's a thing we we'll, let's see how that plays out okay so, now the next thing is uh, okay this is another in- uh, consequences of a taliban footprint in the kashgar prefecture and hotan is talking uh, about the chinese overflow so the chinese so uh, so now the thing is sir as i said uh, taliban has not only seen sri lanka as an example in terms of uh, the economic collapse so taliban or not uh, taliban have been very clear from the start you for for the chinese they have been very clear to the mcc uh, the company that is essentially manning up all mines and minerals they have been very clear no manpower of chinese origin will step a foot in afghanistan they need to hire local uh, or promote local employment so uh, the key company holders of owned by beijing may have a certain i would say presence in the region not only in kashgar but also in in parts of badakhshan um, some part of uh, saraipol wardak and all those regions um, but uh, the similar play that the chinese did in terms of pakistan by bringing in chinese manpower that's not happening okay so there is a different model which chinese are being forced to adopt yes sir right okay yes sir so and akash if i may answer you chinese are worried about this chinese are worried about hotan agar hotan mein ye yahan se afghani wahan chale gaye to unko unka unka problem in fact if actually if xinjiang goes on fire through a overflow of militancy from here look at the end of the day let me give you my view of this whole story at the end of the day chinese are succumbing to afghan blackmail okay this taliban is a still a loose cannon it is still a loose cannon trying to be a good cannon which it can't be <laughs> right it's got yeah. too many this thing it's it, it, i mean you know from what anant has said to us so far taliban has very little control over afghanistan beyond uh, kabul it might be controlling certain aspects but many things are out of its control its problems with pakistan will control uh, continue and pakistan is one of their lifelines at which is at risk so if that is at risk the natural tendency of taliban will be going to violent will be to go violent it's not going to deal with peace so if there is peace it has to deal with through irregulars and through ttp if irregulars are the ones uh, which is the constitu- the major constituent and the power of the uh, taliban system these can go into china and china is trying to buy off afghanistan we should understand this and okay so these are the issues which there we'll see how it goes and we'll when we don't know okay uh right where is saleh this is a uh, next vice president saleh no sir saleh is out of the game sir saleh was never in the game i mean people may argue but um uh, vice president saleh is amrullah saleh has uh, um has no role to play now so nobody has a role right. to play i mean 
if you if i may say so sir uh, uae i mean uh, uae has now started engaging with the uh, taliban and uae is the only country that also provided asylum to um, president ghani on the count that neither president ghani nor his his compatriots within the cabinet is going to say any is going to utter a single word about afghan policy so sir they are all um, shadowed okay. sir right uh so this is an interesting question <laughs> will you go sir <laughs> will you go to ram mandir look main ram mandir nahi jaunga main isliye nahi ja raha hu kyunki main vishnu avatar ke paas ja raha hu venkateshwara balaji ke paas ja raha hu so right so we are going there so and so you know i think in our way of thinking uh at least in you know many people's way of thinking balaji is a little higher you know than than uh, he's he's vishnu so we're going there uh that is why it's not as if uh, this thing and we have to go there for some reason so we are going there china can use its manufactured goods and supply them at low cost yeah i wish that's uh, say that's the thing uh okay yeah he says uh, mo- most encouraging to see mutually respectful interaction of young talents with veterans yeah i wish yeah, we'll get it arunachal you help me you like you come to this channel tell your friends more will come slowly they'll happen there's no hurry humbi you know we are also playing the wait and watch game <laughs> let me let me let me tell all of you something the other day i saw a thumbnail of some video channel where is one guy you know coming and showing a bloody as if he's going to shoot down people and all posing <laughs> like an army man oh yeah that fellow doesn't know his you know elbow from the other places of his anatomy <laughs> right he's never seen war he's never you know he's he wouldn't have ever fired a rifle also <laughs> now for such people to come and talk yeah they all talk well Uh, or a journalist will talk like that or a you know media man they can talk what they want but is it realism right so i do understand when people talk realistically when people talk with hard facts like what anand anand has been just reeling out facts for the past one hour right things become a little dry i, I also know if i talk ओ कल जी चिनपिंग मर जाएगा उसके लिए ना वो अंदर कू होने वाला है एक और उसके अगेंस्ट एक यू नो आर्मी में दस जनरल हैं उसको मारने के लिए एक गुट है शंघाई ग्रुप वो बोलते हैं कुछ शंघाई ग्रुप है जो उसको नीचे वो लीक की चैंग का का ये सब मैं बोल सकता हूँ दैट्स नॉट जियो पॉलिटिक्स that's why i said i am very clear i'll get the best people in the business and anand here is one of the best guys i've known in terms of knowledge and unless the young people are given a platform to speak how will they become good tomorrow okay and let me also give you one last thing how many people like will be called to sri lanka to talk about all this there young people like anand he is going like i told you why is he going because he's got depth the sri lankans feel that he has depth to call him there to talk to the staff college to talk to the think tank so other channels you know, i don't want to name you would any channel you want who talks of geopolitics except strive strive dialogues has got depth do they have depth do they know what they're talking right Uh, you get one guy who can talk on everything how is it feasible in fact today i have learned i have learned a lot like here rahul has said i have learned a lot so i have i i have also learned okay okay right i isn't indian investment doomed in afghanistan when ashraf ghani fled i don't think so your take uh, anand you think we have lost everything I don't know. Mm, so I mean that's uh, basically sir how do you it's it's how you see it I mean I understand the emotion that he's coming from but sir jab tak aap investment nahi karoge tab tak aap community ko kaise nahi pehchanoge so 
it's not investment does not always uh, give fruitful or formidable outcome but uh, it's not again sir i'm of the opinion that it's not the investment that you do uh, maintaining the investment is important so yeah um, if we we went in we made a hospital sir we we had a salma dam we made the parliament now so people remember all of that sir and people do remember all of that sir but sir we as an indian sir because he's mentioned isn't indian investment so as an indian we don't need to do investment to justify our relationship with afghanistan sir yeah i agree with you that's an important point you made we are investing into the people of afghanistan sir that won't change just remember just think afghanistan afghan team did so well in world cup where is the afghan team based it is based in delhi so there's a whole uh, thing to it okay now let me say uh, nagananda krishnamurthy thanks he become a youtube member welcome uh, yeah let me ask okay zahid this is very interesting question he says isn't in ttp an indian sponsored terrorist group promoting <laughs> terrorism as a proxy of india is <laughs> really joke yeah you think we we go and sponsor ttp forget it okay the last guys whom india can sponsor are ttp you <laughs> 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 <He's> also laughing <laughs> hilarious <laughs> hilarious yeah Uh, joy deep mitra uh, will india's investment be safe in afghanistan same thing we are investing in people what we invest in people will always be safe we are not investing in projects like uh, china is doing that china has a trade relationship with them they want something out of uh, afghanistan we don't want anything out of afghanistan that's the difference that's the difference and look let me take t- now give you with my experience okay uh, of all the countries who have dealt with afghanistan uh, afghanistan has dealt with all the countries it is only with india that afghanistan taliban have reached out and said please come and reopen the hospitals please come and reopen your aid thing no one else has they have asked yes sir am i right right sir they have not asked okay so your investment in afghanistan will always be safe because you have invested in the people of afghanistan and someone has asked will you know how can you trouble pakistan from the western border you don't have to trouble please understand you don't have to trouble pakistan from the western border leave it to the people of afghanistan they'll trouble them the way i look at it for the next 100 years that border will be troublesome it will never be settled so okay this will never be they will be never be settled and pakistan will be stuck there all you have to do is invest in people people will take care of your interests your what is our interest i mean let me put it in geopolitical terms what is my interest in afghanistan why should i help a common afghan i am interested in afghanistan keeping pakistan occupied with itself because they have a problem they have the shared problems of the durand line okay that they will be achieved whether it's by ttp taliban or the normal of pakistani or pashtun or the afghan it will happen you just keep watching okay yeah yeah last all investments are attached with risk appetite and growth potential based on calculation i think we are there i have no doubt about it right but what anand has given the larger message today is that the taliban is there to stay one two taliban will not control afghanistan fully like a proper state it is not at recognized countries will deal with taliban on a one to one basis which is more important and not on a collective basis the very important thing is china is reaching out to taliban very desperately for many things it wants something and it wants to prevent spread of militancy going into that place so virtually that is there 
and taliban is probably the first country which has not allowed chinese you know workers to come into afghanistan which is important okay so there are a lot of conditions going on out there and of course one condition is if what happens if three or four chinese get bumped off there and taliban doesn't have to do it there are so many other lo- loose actors cannons going around there so we're going to see an interesting thing you will also see because of the the world which taliban uh, and afghanistan will continue you will also see china being more engaged there okay this is actually a in which is this is actually an indirect lever for us on china okay is a indirect lever which people might might understand might not understand anyway this is what it is i think we had a terrific session anand have Thank a great you. trip to sri lanka and from sri lanka on 7th we'll talk about whatever you want on sri lanka you give me sir, the topic sir, on 7th morning it's more than enough for me okay sir sir thank you so, sir thank you for having me we're going to have anant live from sri lanka on 7th till then thank you good evening and jai hind